everyone and thank you for tuning in today. This is Art Life. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a gorgeous little planter box. Now this is created using air drying clay out of some simple techniques. But first, you will need to get air drying clay from the shops as well as a tiny little plant. Young kids can do this as well as adults. So please stay tuned and I'll show you how. Now what you'll need for our lesson today, the most important thing first of all is the air drying clay. I use DAS. It's a really good quality air drying clay. However, there's lots of other brands that are available. I'm gonna show you techniques with this specific type of clay, which needs to be air drying. So please make sure it is air drying before you begin the task. You'll also need some clean water, some paints to decorate and some brushes as well. Let's get started. So the main thing that we need to use for today's little pinch pot is some air drying clay. Now, I'm using a white dyed one, but you can get terracotta, which is a bit more natural. And the first thing you need to do is soften the clay using your hands. Now, the warmth of my hands is warming up the clay. It's a very cold day here today, so it's extra cold. And so I just need to squeeze the clay to soften it a little bit. So just kneading it in my hands, it will just make it a lot easier when you come to trying to manipulate the clay and move it around. So take some time, maybe five or 10 minutes to get the clay nice and soft. Your hands might look a little bit like that after you've been kneading the clay. It is a bit of a messy task, but it is also very fun. So once you have a nice soft pile of clay, we're ready to create our bowl. The first thing you need to do is turn this lump into a nice neat ball. So I'm gonna roll it around in my hands, squeeze, roll, like this to get it into a nice ball. Can you see that? If you've got some big cracks like I have, it might be worth using a little fingertip, only a fingertip of water and a bit of pressure. Can you see how I'm just rubbing that there and the crack is pretty much disappearing. That happens because the clay starts to dry out as it's in the open air, it starts to dry. So a little bit of water will keep uh, the moisture and the pressure will help to get rid of the cracks. So now I've got a nice, beautiful ball to get started. So I'm going to use my thumb now to create a bit of a hole in the ball, all right, and push down like that. All right. Now, you don't want to push down so hard that your thumb comes out the other side because it does need to have a base. So I'm pushing my thumb in, but not all the way. Then I'm going to use my hands almost like my hands were a duck. So I'm going to put my thumb in like that and then pinch with my other fingers. Can you see how I'm moving the pot around? And pinching my fingers as I go around. That's causing the ball to become more like a pot already. Now, that hole isn't big enough for a plant yet, so I need to keep going. But please be aware that if you pinch too hard and you, if you make this clay too thin, it's gonna break apart and be, um, it's not gonna be very secure. So you do wanna keep a quite a nice thick base. You can see that as I'm pinching, the sides are getting thinner and my pot is getting bigger. So now I can just start to mold the pot with my fingers. Mine's getting a few cracks here. That will probably happen to you too, but we know what we need to do, don't we? We need to get a little bit water and use our finger to try to get rid of those cracks. Try your best to get rid of all of them because it will look much nicer the smoother it is. Right, I'm gonna take a bit of time now to get this as smooth as I can, including all the sides. And then I'll teach you a few fun extras that you can do. Now I've 
taught kids as young as four how to do this. So even very young kids can have a go. And then for any older kids or even adults, I'll teach you a few things that you can add to make yours even better. But this is pretty much what we're going for. We wanna be able to put a plant in there, it needs to be high enough to be able to put a plant in, it can't be too shallow. And it needs to be able to sit flat on a table. Okay, for this next part, we're gonna turn our pot upside down while it is still wet. Then you need four little pieces of clay that are about the same size. And we're gonna roll all of them into little balls, just like we did with the pot. All right. We're going to attach these as legs, just like that, to the base of our bowl. Now, if you were just to leave that like that, they might stay there for now, but once the clay dries, it actually shrinks and these will just end up falling off. So you actually do need to press the clay into each other. So I'm using my finger there. I'll show you up close and attaching the clay by molding it in. Can you see that? I need to do that all the way around but please be aware that we don't want to make a hole in the bottom. So you do need to apply enough pressure to attach the leg while not actually ruining your pot. Remember if your clay ever gets any cracks in it, use a little bit of water. You can see there that I've attached that leg. And I'm going to repeat that process for the other three. You can be reassured that this will stay once the clay dries if you can no longer see where they joined. If you get rid of that joining line by smoothening it out, using a little bit of water, using a little bit of pressure, you can be fairly certain that that's going to stay in place once it all dries. Now you can get clay tools that help this step to be a little bit easier. But for now, you could use other things if you would prefer, like the bottom of a paintbrush would work. Obviously, I'm just, I have also been using my finger, but with something like this, it is a little bit tricky to get into the sides. So if you do have a paintbrush, sometimes even a spoon could work. It can help you along the way. Don't just be lazy and do a little bit like that on, on one side. You really do need to go all the way around. It would be a real shame if you wake up tomorrow morning, come down to see your bowl and the pieces that you've attached just weren't done properly and they all fall off. A bit of hot glue will work to attach them again, but kind of defeats the point. All right, my four legs have been attached and I'm just going to sort of press that down into the ground so that they sit nice and flat. Now, another thing that you can do is I'm actually gonna turn my planter pot here into a little dog. You can do a fox or a bunny or whatever you like, but all I'm gonna do is just grab some new pieces of clay Soften them a bit, it's gone a bit crackly. All right, and now I'm going to mold it into a triangle, flat triangle shape, just pressing my fingers together like this. You can use a knife to cut as well. All right, and I'm going to attach that there. Now we know how to attach just by pressing it down using a bit of water and getting rid of any joining lines just like that. Now I'm going to do that twice because they have two ears. Obviously 
basically this is just an extension for anyone that wants to um, further their skills and it'd be great to see what you come up with and what type of animals or additions you you do to your little pinch pot here it starts off such a simple task but with your creativity you can really turn it into whatever you want for example these could be petals you go all the way around you could do a giraffe's neck coming up you can really attach whatever you want especially if the sides of your bowl remain nice and thick and sturdy it means that they're able to take on a bit of um, heaviness from the extra clay all right my lucky last detail which i'm going to do is create a tiny little nose ready to dry. Now remember, you cannot go back in and change anything once it's dry. I actually can't add anything further once this has dried out. So make sure you add everything you want to and change and manipulate anything you want to while your clay is still wet. And we are going to let him just sit out in the air for a day or two and let him dry out. Please make sure that you also wrap up any extra clay that you didn't use in some glad wrap or cling wrap like this. Otherwise, it will also dry out and you don't want that. Now, remember I mentioned that young kids are able to do this task. These ones were by my young girls. They're currently drying. My girls are two and five. They did have obviously a little bit of help with it, um, but for the most part, they were able to do it by themselves. So painting with watercolors means that the paint is gonna be a little bit more see-through. If you use acrylic paint, it's going to be a lot brighter and stand out a little bit more. However, I like the effect of watercolour, I think it looks really natural and almost ceramic. Today I'm painting sort of realistic colours, decided to do my pot as a bit of a fox character rather than a dog, but obviously you could be a bit more abstract with it and paint any way you want. Obviously the more water you use, the lighter your colour will become. Remember when painting, any details like the face or whiskers, that comes last. We need to do a bit of a layer of colour first before painting on any of the facial features. You need to sort of dab the brush to get into some of these cracks. Now, obviously, if you're planning to keep this as a jewelry holder or something like that, you would paint the inside. However, I'm going to use it as a little planter pot, so I only really need to paint about a centimetre in. So when painting the details, I suggest to use a very fine brush, like this one. It just means that you're gonna be able to paint with a lot more control and just put these tiny little details in as neatly as possible.
step I'm going to show you now is optional. I'm going to now coat my dry pot with a gel medium. You could also use varnish or any sort of coating medium. This one I just got from Officeworks. And it will just give it a bit of protection over time and give it a nice sort of shiny texture. Just applying a thin layer as evenly as possible and this will dry clear and shiny. So obviously you guys can choose to use your pinch pot for whatever you like but I'm going to turn it into a bit of a planter. So the only thing I know how to keep alive are some succulents. So I'm going to pop the succulents into the pot now. So it's as simple as that. I really hope that you've enjoyed to create your pinch pot planter animal today. And I really also hope that you take some photos and share them with me, especially if you've decided to create something a little different from this one today. Please make sure that you like, share and comment below to the Art Life page and ensure that you subscribe for future videos. See you later.